How's it going, everybody? So I'm here with Neil Cranston. He's from Oregon. He's got a new song, Make It Without You, available on all platforms. How's it going, Neil? Good, Troy. It's great, nice. great to have me on the show. Thank you, man. Hey, thank you for being on, Neil. How's it looking right now in Oregon? Well, it's uh, it's been raining the last couple of days, but that's, uh, that's, that's the usual here, so. That's the huge. Mm-hmm. Nice, man. So Make It Without You, it's available on all platforms. How, how, how new is this song? So this song uh, I released in September, and uh, it's a song I'd been writing for over the course of the year. And uh, during quarantine, I had a lot of time to work on music. So, you know, mm -hmm. it was a great opportunity for me to um, get something recorded and put out there. So you it play was the guitar an exciting and piano. process. Yeah, I've played the piano since um, probably third grade, and uh, I've been playing the guitar for quite a while, too. So how'd you pick up the piano? How'd you get into that? So actually I started playing back in, in church growing up and um, I basically would sit down and just start picking out melodies on the piano, just note by note and annoying the hell out of my family. But mm -hmm. uh, eventually uh, I started to pick things up and um, I took lessons for you know, around six, six or eight weeks and kind of learned the basics of the piano. And from there, I basically taught myself um, everything else and just have been learning over time and, you know, continuing to work on, on the craft. Nice. So you took lessons just for a little bit and then you took what you had and you rode with that. And here you are musician fully running. You got guitar and piano under your belt. Yeah. And I, I think that there's a lot of different ways you can approach music, but personally for me, it really helped having an internal motivation and not, you know, not doing something because I need to practice for a lesson or anything, but doing something mm. because I truly wanted to, you know, <clears throat> mm -hmm. that's huge. That's ultimately what's going to get us to progress with the instrument, right? If you treat it like homework or like a task that you don't really want to get done, you're not going to get very far. Exactly. Exactly. So you had that internal motivation. You said just as you were playing with the piano and hitting those notes, it was a real piano, a real, you know, an, 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 a real piano, not an electric one. Yeah. Yeah. I grew, we actually had an old honky tonk upright piano that I grew up playing. That's what I learned on, but that's, <laughs> you know, it, the sound wasn't too great. It was a little bit out of tune, but you know, it was a real piano and it has real emotion in there. I was about to say it's that emotion and that real sound that when you hear that, man, you, 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 you got you are infected by it and it sounds like you really got bit by the bug there and you kept right. going with it that's awesome right. so since, since then have you have you moved forward with taking lessons anywhere else or are you still self-taught and you're still producing yourself yeah yeah i'm still i'm still self-taught and um you know the big thing for me is that i i take in um as many influences as i can and so for me that's that, that's kind of my way of learning in music is I think a lot of artists forget to, to listen. I think that's the, that's the biggest, you know, step is just take in everything that you can. And if you do that, you're going to grow because you're, you're learning from other people and you're seeing, okay, well, what did they do? How can I um, not, not copy or duplicate, but how can I use maybe some of those skills and, and implement them into my own playing? <clears throat> How do you allow this openness? Is this something that's intrinsic with you? Is it natural? Did you sort of work it like a muscle? How do you allow this sort of vulnerability and op openness to the craft and to everything? It sounds like you let everything affect you and you take it all in. Right, right. Yeah, uh, it's a process and I, I haven't always been the, the best at it, but I think it does take having just an open mind going in and saying, okay, what, what you know, genres of music can I listen to and what can I take from them? So instead of saying, okay, well, I don't like this kind of music or I don't like this music say, okay, 
what maybe are the good qualities of this or the good qualities of that? What can I learn from this? What can I learn from that? So, you know, I listen to everything ranging from classical piano to hip hop, rap, R and B rock and roll, you know, mm, very it's interesting re re reggae music, everything in between, because everything has an influence and you can learn something about every genre of music. Absolutely. Absolutely. You're, you are hitting the nail on the head with that. Absolutely. And it's so funny. You sort of start to see similarities even within the music. I, are you, how do you feel with music theory? Do you toy around with music theory? Are you, you know, well-versed in it or do you sort of stay away and you, you're more with the sound and the groove of things? I, I, I am well-versed in music theory um, partially because I play by ear and so I don't read music. So for me to understand kind of how to just start playing a song, right. I have to have some sort of knowledge of how music itself works so I can kind of find my way around. And so music theory for me is kind of like a roadmap, basically. Absolutely. Absolutely. So, yeah, I, I think reading music is great, but it has limiting qualities because you're, you're stuck playing whatever's on a page. And true. so that, that, never got, uh, that never got me too excited. So I never ended up really learning how to do it. So, a million. <laughs> but you know, I, I like what I do. So I like, I like playing. So a million percent. And now do you perform with uh, several other groups? Are you a solo artist? How do you go about performing? I'm, I'm primarily a solo artist. Uh, I, I do work with a number of other um, musicians and, you know, what, when I'll play gigs, sometimes I'll bring on a couple of buddies and they'll, they'll jump in and back me up and nice. Yeah. How are we looking with the new music? We got an album coming out. What do you think? Collaborations? What's that looking like? So I'm, I'm currently, I'm, I've been working on the writing process. So I'm writing a lot of music and that's kind of my goal right now is uh, eventually I'd like to release an EP or an album uh, coming up in the future, but this is a project I don't want to rush. And uh, mm -hmm. I really want to take the time to just write and really make sure that the songs are something that I want to put on an album. So potentially maybe some singles in the meantime uh, coming out, but uh, yeah, I'd like to get together a, a full um, album eventually. Would you say that when you come out with this album, this is going to be, you know, the world's introduction to Neo, the artist, or would you say you're already out there putting out your music or, you know, would it be officially this new album? You know, we're always constantly reinventing ourselves, but would you say this is going to be the one to really, you know, put you on the map? I would say, um, it's the kind of quality of work that, that, that would be the goal. Um, and that's when I say, you know, I don't want to rush to put something out. This would be something that I really want to take my time in to make sure that I can really push this, you know, a hundred percent. So at the moment, live music is kind of, is my, is my priority. So that, that's kind of how I'm spreading my music is through live, uh, atmosphere and, yeah, when when the time comes, I'd like to get in the studio and 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 record a legit album. Hey, that's huge though. The fact that you're getting out there performing live because one, you're under pressure, and two, you have to remember everything right off what's in front of you. You know, you're performing, right. you have no time to hesitate, versus when you're in your bedroom and you're sort of going over a song, it's very easy to slack, look at the phone. When you're out there performing, you're you're in it. You're you gotta stay ready so you you can't get ready. So, that's so that's right. pretty, that's good, man. That's good. And how's that looking like right now? How's that been? Uh, it's, performing? Been, it's, it's been going well, uh, this year obviously has been tough for, for live music, but you know, over the last few years, I've played at a number of wineries, bars, restaurants, weddings, nice. and, and that's been good. You know, it's, it's helped build my confidence and, um, kind of build my brand as a musician. And uh, yeah, so I, it sounds I like love, a, I love playing live music. That's a very intelligent approach to getting out there and just performing your work. How did you think about performing at wineries and, and, and all these extravagant places? How did you go about that? Did somebody just say, hey, go to the winery and say you're an artist? Did you see a, a flyer? You know, how'd you go about that? You know, it, it's, it really started with, you know, I, I eventually came to the conclusion that I could do, do this live and I could play music live. And that was really one of my strengths as a musician. And so I, I started just asking around and a lot of it started from word of mouth. You know, a buddy of mine would say, Hey, I got, 
you know, a wedding coming up. Would you like to, would you like to play? And it started from there and I started to build up a repertoire. So you, and, you stayed uh, ready. You never had to get ready. You just stayed ready. If your buddy was getting yeah. married, you were like, all right, man, I'm going to show up. I got the set. Yeah, let's, let's exactly. do it. Exactly. I start, I didn't start out even, I didn't even charge him for it. You know, I started out doing this stuff for free and eventually built up, you know, enough of a kind of platform that I could start to actually make money doing it. And mm. uh, a, another winery I played out at last um, winter, last Christmas time, I was playing, uh, they had a nice grand piano and I was playing Christmas music and uh, CJ McCollum from the Portland Trailblazers walks in and he sits down and starts drinking some wine and I'm sitting there playing and I'm just like, holy shit. So wow. it, it was a, it was a really cool experience for me. I mean, I'm a big, you know, Portland Trailblazer fan. And uh, so it, it was really cool to see one of my idols walk in and just be there while I'm playing the piano. That's pretty surreal, man. That's pretty surreal. Yeah. All right, guys, coming up after our commercial break, we're going to talk more about Neil's music. <laughs> I'm going to ask you um, a little bit about your childhood, if that's okay. You know, your upbringing, as, as such as like how you started the music. I know you start. you said you toyed with the piano and whatnot, but um, I might just ask you, you know, how you went from that to toil it a little back to just how you decided to go from that to, hey, let's make the Instagram and call ourselves, you know, working artist. Right. All right, you guys. So we're back with Neil Cranston. He's a musician from Oregon and he's got an, He's got new music coming out. He's got plenty of new music coming out, but we're just sitting on it and waiting because you can't rush excellence. And, and, and he's, a, he's a good musician, so he's got good music, and it's not about putting out just something out there for people to listen to. We want this to really make an impact. So, Neil, let's talk about you know, how you went from being a young, you know, young, young gentleman you know, playing with the piano and just playing a little bit of guitar to making music. What was your first song? When did you write your first song? Right. Well, that's a good question. Uh, the, the big thing, and then we talked a little bit about this, you know, I, I took in a lot of influence and I played a lot of, a lot of covers and, and that helped build my kind of mechanics and, and taught me how to, you know, how music works, how songs work and taking all those influences in when it came to writing the covers? a lot, a lot of classic rock, a lot, of, you know, a lot of stuff that my dad listened to. And so th that kind of music had a big, big influence on me, you know, the stuff in the 60s and 70s and 80s. I mean, that's that's timeless music. And I think it, it will continue to, you know, inspire, Absolutely. you know, oh generations from now. It still is. You still see music sampling the same stuff over and over exactly. again. Exactly. We're, yeah. we're kind of it's kind of just a rotating wheel of recycle recycling the same fundamental yep. stuff. So it's, right. you know, it's it's all there. So I, you know, I was lucky to have that influence growing up from my dad. Um, you know, he was more of a boomer, so a little bit older parents, but I got the, the musical influence from them. And so I'm really, I'm really glad that I did because that, that was one of the big inspirations for me. And um, yeah, man. So it just, it started just playing in my bedroom and just playing hours and hours and, and just jamming out and, you know, putting on like, putting on some Elton John playing live and just playing along with him or whatever it nice. was, you know, that, that's what motivated me and, and uh, kept me continuing to work on my craft. Nice. So that's, that's really awesome. So, so you were covering songs and you were pretty much learning from the masters. You were saying, how did the best make music and you learned from them. That's really interesting because some people never really think of doing that. They think for some reason it's sort of like, not cool to do or whatever and they just start trying to learn their own songs and they find that if you never really learn how a song is structured or how it even you know you really don't even know the unnamed the unnamed spear never misses they say you know so you don't really yeah. know if, if you're doing anything wrong if you don't even know how a song is structured so it's interesting that you really went went with 
learning songs and covering them and just beginning to end. And that's really awesome. That says a lot about just your work. Yeah. That, you know, that's exactly right, Troy. And that's the thing is when you get into writing your own music, if you don't have any idea of the structure of, of how this, how this all works. And if you don't have those influences, it's going to be really hard for you to write something that people can relate to, you know, because people relate to emotion in music. And if you don't know how to invoke emotion using different chord structures, that's going to be tough for you to do. So it's all really important stuff. Agreed. And let's talk a little bit more about yourself then with regards to the fact that you allow things to affect you. you you're an open person and you just let things come in. So you're able to put them out in the music and just it seems like all in all live your life in an open way and just take things yeah. in rather than rather than shove away from everything. Uh, right. rather than deflect which is really awesome actually that's a again that's how do you keep this going on a daily basis is this something you have to constantly reinforce you know how do you go about your day-to-day -day life this this open and this vulnerable because there's always you know you know someone gives you a look the wrong way and that you can easily <laughs> you can easily shut that down how do you keep yeah. that constantly going yeah you know that that's a good question uh it's it's a it's a process because it it, it is true that you know it's easy to, to think if you put something out and you get a bad comment or something, you, it's easy to put yourself mm -hmm. down. But at the end of the day, I think one of, one of the qualities that helps me move forward as a person is that I'm, I'm very centered in, in kind of what I'm doing, who I am, what I believe in. So I'm not swayed by a lot of the, you know, commotion going on around me. You're self-motivated. Yeah, I'm self-motivated, you know, I'm, I'm working on myself to try to, you know, really focus on what, what makes me happy. And it's, you know, being 21 years old, I feel really blessed to, to know, you know, that music is a passion of mine. And I know a lot of people that they, they don't find their passion maybe for a long time. And so I, I do feel blessed that I, I have a good sense of direction and where I'm heading. I think that keeps me grounded. And, mm -hmm. um, Absolutely. Yeah. That, that, that could definitely contribute in, in large amounts to how you're able to live your life this way. Because when you don't really know, we all know those people who are really just directionless and they don't know where they're mm -hmm. going. And they walk with all of this anxiety and just stress because they're always kind of either comparing or looking for the next thing or a thing. And it's like you really just want to pick and just go for it. You know what I mean? I think just struggling for something that's worthwhile for you. And, you know, sacrificing for something that's worth sacrificing for you're you're, you're probably going to be busy enough to not really worry about some really uh, trivial things. That's right. That's right, man. Nice, man. So what's your musical process right now? Are you doing like a little bit day to day? Are you practicing a little bit of music theory? Are you constantly pitching at us, uh, chipping away at a song you're writing? I see that you have some music, uh, you know, on the Instagram. I saw you were working on something and it sounded great. You know, talk to me about that. How do you start songs are you just playing with chord structures are you you just fiddle away you know how to yeah man well what i've been what i've been doing here for quite some time is i i allow music to be a part of my day daily routine almost every day um definitely every day but in terms of playing music i would say almost every day and but i think one of the biggest things that keeps me where I'm going is that I, it's not something forced and I don't ha say, okay, you need to sit down and you need to practice for two hours every day. You know, that's right. not what I'm doing. It's okay. I sit down, grab my guitar and just start playing, you know, maybe work on something, maybe practice something, but then just start exploring. And we say, all have day-to-day okay, -day things, you know, we have stuff to do all day. What if you have like homework or some a video to watch for like a class? Do you, do you have the guitar in your hands while you're watching something and you're kind of still practicing stuff or you, you know, there's some people who really go in like that. Right. Yeah. I was just sitting today in my Zoom class, you know, at college and uh, I had my mic on mute and I was sitting there just playing the guitar, Oh, you know, yeah. see, there you and go. so, <laughs> you, you know, I find I find times throughout the day to to work on music or bring music into my life, you know, in, in a non forceful way. And just to, those are when the best ideas come is when you're just sitting there playing and you go, what was that? I just played, you know, what was right. that chord? What was Absolutely. that? What was that note? And so when, when you start to let the music happen rather than force the music to happen, that's when good things come. 
1 million percent. I 100% agree, even from my own experience. I've been playing guitar for maybe 14 years. And what really became a struggle was the fact that you got to, when it started to feel like I had to grab it, had to learn stuff, had to keep it going versus when I started to just be like, you know what? Let's learn our favorite songs again. Let's learn our favorite licks again. Let's just learn what made all these things so good and then work from right. the bottom, bottom up again instead of this constant thing of like, I'm already here. I need to get here quicker. Like you, you're constantly trying to get to this, this thing. And I think when you slow all that down, you say, hold on, let's, get, let's take a few steps back and let's reassess the situation and let's capitalize on this stuff. I think you get a little more breathing room and you, you, you get better as a musician versus trying to get to some unknown point. Absolutely, man. I, I couldn't agree more. I, I think that's personally, I think that's how everyone should approach music. You know, I, I do think that's why a lot of people will play when they're younger and they get burned out because they, they're not able to keep up with this kind of notion that they need to practice and they don't like to be forced to do. No one likes to be forced to do anything, you know? And so why would you be forced to do something that you love doing? You know, that should be something you want to do. So, yeah, I couldn't agree more, man. Hey, man, I am really inspired by your motivation. I feel it and I, I'm, I'm struck by it. And it's really awesome to see. Do you do a lot of reading? Are you doing, you know, what do you do? You, you're a college student. Do you I imagine you do your reading on your own, though? You're reading any, you got. Is that Matthew McConaughey's Green Lights book you got on there? Is that, <laughs> It is. Yeah. Yeah. I, I read that book a couple months ago and uh, I really, really enjoyed it because I can relate a lot to, you know, Matthew McConaughey wasn't always the famous person that, that we all know today. And so reading kind of his book, his background, where he came from, you know, I related a lot, a lot to the mindset that he has, you know, and so 1 million percent. Yeah. So I, I really enjoyed that read. That was a really great book. Um, Kind of, right. it's kind of rejuvenated me in, in some ways and inspired me to really um, push myself to go for my goals and you know go for my dreams. You know, kind of interesting, right? You never would have thought a Matthew McConaughey autobiography would have been something that you know reignites some fire in you. But hey, you know, you find treasure where sometimes where you're not looking, and that's not to say you exactly. know I have great respect for Matthew McConaughey and his work, but. You know, I guess a lot of people have written books and have done these sort of things, but I think he really did something special and people shouldn't overlook that. I think it's a good book. Uh, I haven't actually read it beginning to end, but I've read some pieces and, you know, I've seen his, I've seen the runaround he did with the podcasts and just things he's, he's said. And it's cool, man. It's cool to see people talk like that. Cause I think from a movie perspective or from the red carpet perspective, they look uh, unattainable. You know what I mean? They got the right, suit, right. the suit, the suits and the Gucci on, and you're just like, I, I can't relate. I, I can't. Yeah. And that, that's, what's cool about, about Matthew is he's, you know, he's, he's really trying to develop kind of, he calls it like a minister of culture basically. And, you know, he, he cares about where he's at and what he's doing down in Austin. And so, yeah, I think I, I resonated with his book a lot and I didn't get the kind of Hollywood vibes, you know, you, you it was something you could really relate to. So yeah, that was, that's one of the readings that I did recently. Um, I just finished a, a book called uh, Jonathan Livingston Siegel. Mm. And it's, it's like a short little story basically. And it's kind of this like comparison of this, this Siegel who's, you know, kind of an outcast to the flock and sorry, my, okay. Can you hear me? Yep. Okay. And essentially, you know, this, this seagull basically want like wants to learn how to fly <laughs> and that's all he wants to focus on. And all the other seagulls are going around the dock, like picking at food and stuff. And so anyways, it sounds weird, but it's a, it's kind of a life. Uh, no, it doesn't sound weird. I life come across advice this? kind of, kind of book. So absolutely how'd you come across a, it did you in a metaphorical way uh i i saw i saw something uh online about it and i just clicked on the link and kind of read a little bit about it and it sounded interesting to me so i'm gonna read it man honestly it sounds interesting i don't think it yeah, it's, great. A, it's a short read i read it in like one night so it took me oh, about okay. a couple hours so people listening to this can hear it too man because it sounds you know look at him man he's self-motivated he's making music so this is what you get. Hey, man, talking about Hollywood, would you ever make that move? You think you might come out to Hollywood or anything to, to keep going with the music? There's a lot of 
resources here to grow in different ways than maybe Oregon. I know there's a lot of action in Oregon for sure, but. Right. Yeah. That's something I've been thinking a lot about actually uh, this last few months. And I've been thinking about where, you know, how can I really fully immerse myself in the scene, you know? So I've been looking into different places and uh, I've, I've been looking into potentially, you know, the, the, the biggest holdback for me is, is Hollywood's expensive, you know, it's an expensive oh, yeah. place to try to try to jump in and make it as as an artist, especially when you don't have a, a huge following and you're not very well known. So it, it's it's that's the scary part. So right now, you know, the next year or so, my my short term, I'm I'm planning on sticking around Oregon, but you know, potentially when I finish out um, grad school, yeah, that's on the table, man. Nothing nothing's off the table. So nice. Nice. All right. Well, coming up after our commercial break, you guys, we're going to keep this going with Neil Cranston. All right, man. Nice. So how are you with time, Neil? Do you, are you okay with, uh, are you, this is good. It's a great episode. Yeah. I'm, yeah. I, I am fine on time. I don't have anything else planned. So I got awesome. all my classes awesome. done this morning. Nice. Nice. Okay. How long so have like, you been doing these podcasts, man? The podcast, it's just been a couple of months now, but I've worked in entertainment for it many, many years now. And I've done all these types of interview work and it's just the first time we're moving forward with this show and stuff. You know what I mean? And it's just, it's been great. You know, it's pretty tongue in cheek. It's pretty with me. It's just me right now. I'm a filmmaker and I make it all on my own. Yeah. You might, you might see it. And I, I I might word it in like our whole teams making a thing, but I I know all the programs. I know I have Adobe premiere and after effects and it's on me, man. So that's awesome, man. I respect, I respect the hustle. You know, hey, th- thank so, you, bro. Thanks, man. Yeah. Thanks. Appreciate yeah. it. You know what? Give me one second. Uh, yeah. All right, you guys, we're back with Neil Cranston coming out of Oregon. He's a music producer and he plays piano. He plays the guitar. What are you playing more right now, of Neil? What are you doing, guitar or piano more? That's funny you ask that because it's the last few weeks i didn't have my piano with me it, it was up at my parents house and so Ooh. um i i had my guitar so i was playing a lot of guitar but nice. uh, the piano is my primary instrument so that's that's kind of where i feel most at home you um, connect to it more so, yeah and uh so yeah being playing the guitar the last few weeks has has been kind of cool because it's you know i get to do more exploring Absolutely. I was going to say, I mean, that's, that opens up a lot of opportunity as a musician because I play guitar and piano too, but I definitely play more guitar. I can take it wherever I go, but with a piano, you might have like an Akai MIDI keyboard, you know, maybe like the mini mini one that looks pretty kind of cool, you know, play with a little bit of synths, but, um, right. you know, but that's cool that you can choose between one. I don't have the piano. It's at mom and dad's. Let's pick up some chords. Let's just keep it right. going. You know, that's right. still I know a lot of people who don't do any either one because the one guitar they have is wherever the hell they left it. You know what I mean? Or, or vice exactly. versa. Yeah. It's so interesting. Sometimes, so, sometimes it's easier for me to write on the guitar than the piano, because I think sometimes I overthink things when I'm writing, you know, on the piano and I'll, I'll try to make it overcomplicated. And so when, when I'm playing guitar, like some of the stuff, I don't even know what I'm doing, but I'm like, well, that sounds good. So Sometimes, <laughs> sometimes it's a little easier for me to write from like a constructive standpoint, you know? Absolutely. So. Nice. Nice, man. And so with regards to recording yourself, do you record yourself on your phone when you're playing? Do you, you know, how are you capturing your material? Does some stuff just go unheard, unseen and you pick up on it, you know, the next day? How are you retaining? Yeah. Yourself? When I'm writing, when I'm writing music, you know, sometimes I'll just, Sometimes if I really like what I'm playing, I will sit there and I'll just keep keep working at it until I get it to the point where I say, okay, I'm not going to forget that. Mm-hmm. But if it's something that I'm kind of on the fly and I'm like, I need to get that idea down, I'll turn on a voice memo. I'll just play something and have that idea for later to go and look at. Nice. So 
Yeah. That, now, that's typically what I do. Nice. Now, with, with regards to production, what are you using to produce your music? Yeah. Uh, I'm primarily using Logic Pro. Nice. And, that's uh, the, yeah. You like it? it Was that? Have you always used Logic? Did you go from Ableton to Logic? I, or? I haven't always used Logic. I grew up, <laughs> I grew up when I was younger using GarageBand, and mm. so, yeah, I you know I wasn't as as serious about my music production back then, but I was still able to get some ideas down, and so that was that was helpful. But when I moved to Logic Pro, I was already familiar with kind of Apple's how Apple worked, and so. It's a lot, lot more powerful of a tool, but you have a similar format that you're at least familiar with. So that was a nice transition for me. That was a perfect transition because you went from Apple to Apple. You know what I mean? Like if you, they're not completely the same, but GarageBand is still an Apple run program. That's got a lot of, you know, at the end of the day, you might as well learn just beats and stuff and and simple stuff. And, you know, these days, if there's any younger musicians that are, you know, kind of out there trying to find their sound. GarageBand is completely, (laughs) it does a lot more than people think. And so one of the things for me was I used it until I basically outgrew it. And so, you know, I know from experience, it's a powerful tool, even for what it is, even being free. So yeah, use what you got, you know, the it, it's not always about the equipment that you have, or, you know, you got to find your sound and, and find a way to record it. Now, of course, if you're trying to release some stuff for the radio, you, you got to have some high quality content and, uh, right. But, uh, yeah, there's a lot to you, say about just getting it can. out there. There's a lot to say about just getting your music wherever it can be heard, even if it's not the best master to produce. Right. Cause I know a lot of people who are sitting on music because I, they think it doesn't sound quite how they want it to sound but when i hear it i'm like man if you had this out you'd probably have a lot of exposure or whatever you want if they you know some people say they don't want exposure I, you know whatever right. it is that you want maybe you'll get another opportunity to get some money for more music but i'm just like man it sounds great you know i, I hear the mastering thing and i agree with you but maybe just put right. it out just put it out right. you know because you don't want it it's been five years maybe since i know i can i know somebody and it's been like five six years you know you can still put it out but timing is everything it is that's right yeah and there you know there's great platforms out there too for music that maybe isn't quite ready for for the streaming services you know soundcloud is one of them where you can still put content out you can still gain a following so really on soundcloud there's still some action there's still some noise there there. there's still yeah there's still some action going on and i don't i don't personally use it really but you know, I, I've seen some people that have been successful using that. And, um, right. you know, like we've talked about, my kind of priority right now has been live music. And so, you know, I've been I've been posting a lot of music on YouTube and, uh, you know, on Instagram and kind of social media and trying to build up the hype that way. And so, you know, I think there's a connection when people see music being played live. They can mm-hmm. connect to the artist a little bit more than just the you know these days the the industry is so oversaturated because anyone can go out and release something you know mm-hmm. the mm-hmm. independent market is so big these days that it's really hard to get your music out there and and heard by an audience that can connect with you so i really feel that live music is going to be one of the the biggest ways that artists like myself that maybe aren't in the the hip hop or the r&b scene are going to be able to move forward absolutely because a lot of these people who are just producing their bedrooms you know without doing a lot of live stuff it's sort of hard to hide behind that mystery because that sort of ceases to exist nowadays when you have to present it constantly you know you got to constantly show it and prove it so if you have some song that sounds great and and you got to perform it and it sounds like garbage i mean good luck to you you know what i mean you do what you can with that exactly yeah and all and all respect to the producers man they they do some incredible work and uh, a lot of them are incredible musicians and have brilliant um, kind of understanding of, of theory and whatnot. But, you know, like you said, you know, it's about the performance in a lot of ways and a lot of people, you know, that's what they want to see. So. Absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, 
and you're not faking the funk. You're, you're performing for them right there. And then they know who you are and they know what you do. You know, there's no mystery to it. It's right there for them to take in and become fans right away versus, you know, you may have heard some guy's song on Apple music. You might know who he's not. And there's not to say what, you know, I, we're just talking about why I think that the fact that you're out there performing live is, is awesome because people can, you said that already before it's that connection and that connection is what's most important, especially when building a repertoire as an artist. Right. Right. Yeah. So that's, that's, what's inspiring for, for me moving forward as a musician is just knowing that those opportunities are out there and, you know, post post COVID world, I'm, I'm really hoping that those are really going to go up and I can start doing this more of a full-time thing and uh, you know, just playing shows and, and booking gigs and making those connections with audiences and playing that song. And there's that guy in the back corner who's, who's shouting you out because that song was for him, you know? Oh yeah. And that's something that I've noticed, you know, the gigs that I've played, it just seems like every song that I play was for somebody, you know, there's times when some people aren't paying attention or some people's doing this, but there's always at least one set of eyes that's glued on me. And as a musician, that's, that means everything, you know, knowing that there's at least someone out there that, that really felt, you know, what you were going for in, in the song. So interesting. Now, when you're performing, do you have the entire crowd within your perspective or are you sort of visualizing one person in front of you? How do you go about performing in front of the crowd? You know, many people have many different methods and, and they sort of either erase the crowd in front of them. Are you able to look at everybody and make a connection with them? How are, how are you doing this? In terms of nerves, like how, yeah. how do you kind of erase the nerves? Yeah. Uh, it's, it's interesting. My, my, one of my first shows I played, I was really, really nervous going in and it, that lasted a couple songs. And then I just kind of loosened up and just kind of remembered what I was doing. You know, this is what I've been doing in my bedroom for my whole life. So when, when I realized that, uh, you know, it became a lot easier for me. And as time has gone on and I've played more and more shows, you know, I, I get more excited than nervous now to play. And I think the biggest things that maybe make me nervous is if I'm not as quite prepared for certain songs or if there's some technical things I need to do, like set up a drum beat basically, and then loop that and then jump in. And that kind of, that's the kind of, that's the kind of stuff that makes me nervous because you (laughs) met, if you miss one beat, everything's off sync, you know? So, yeah, but but that's the kind of stuff. Go ahead. You go ahead. Yeah. That's the kind of stuff when you're, when you're playing live, um, that scares but you can pick me. up on that stuff. I don't mean to interrupt you. You can pick up on that. And that's still impressive. The fact that you can put out the fire without needing somebody to sort of scramble around and put it out for you. Right. Right. That's awesome. Yeah. That's awesome, man. So it sounds like you, you are a full running performing musician. You, 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 the way you speak, the way you, the way you word things, you know, the name of the game, you know, the way it works, you know, the rules and you know what you have to do to deliver a performance. So it sounds to me like, you know, we just got to get that album so we can really hear yeah, it on, on right. the, you know, on these platforms that are available f- to have, you know, some sort of exposure given to artists, but you, you, right. You yeah. Have- and that, that's the goal, man. That's the goal is getting something out there so that when I'm playing these shows and people feel like they're connecting, I can say, Hey, mm-hmm. here, here's my music, you know, give, give them the link. And let them know it's on the streaming services so that they have somewhere that they can look you up and say, okay, I'm a fan. And so, yeah, that's, that's, I completely agree, man. That's the goal. I'm, I'm hoping that I can get something down this year, you know, but like we talked about, you know, I got to make sure it's something that's of the, of the highest quality to me, you know. How do you feel about the, when I forget the exact person who said this quote, but it's, you can't really complain about writer's block unless you have about 54,000 bad words. Do you pr- practice your music? Do you get a lot of bad stuff out before you get good stuff? Are you somebody who has only good come out of, you know, you're a, well, you're, you're, you're a well-trained musician, you know what I mean? How, you, how do you go about these practice sessions? You know, do you, you know, I know people who say, I don't touch it until the inspiration's there. I know you, you know, you let it all come to you, but there is, Sometimes when you let everything come to you, you don't want anything to come to you until you allow it to come to you. Yeah. It sounds to me like I, you are. You go ahead. For, for me, I, uh, I'm, not, I'm not one of those perfectionists, perfectionists that says, okay, I'm not going to release anything, right? And so 
that that's kind of what I've been doing on my kind of YouTube on my Instagram is just kind of releasing what I got. And I I've seen a lot of growth since I've even just started doing that, you know, and that's only been the last, the last year or so. So it's been a cool process because I've got to go back and look at how I've grown, but in terms of, you know, my, my hold back is releasing on streaming platforms, you know, when I'm, when I'm not completely ready, but yeah, you know, I, I do like to kind of present myself, be a little bit vulnerable and say, okay, you know, maybe this isn't perfect, but I'm just going to give people a taste or I'm going to release mm-hmm. something that gives them more of an idea and shows me as more of a human, you know, I make mistakes, you know, I'm not, I'm not perfect. And I, I, I can admit that. And I don't, I don't mind saying that. So especially in this day and age, people want to see that process and that evolution. You know, back then musicians stopped showing previews of their songs because they, people would get mad when the album comes out and it sounds a little bit different or they changed it. And then people were like, Oh, you know what I mean? We really, we want it to be how the preview was. And they got out, you know, you know, that that whole thing. And now I think people want to see the evolution and the process. And there's so many versions of different songs out there. Anyways, you, 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 there is, and you're only 21, so you have stuff on YouTube. You're avail- you can be found, you can be discovered, but it's sort of like, it's just little bricks. They're little bricks. You know, the world hasn't even seen what's out there. And it's really just about you wanting to put it out whenever you want. So whenever you're ready. That's right, man. Well, that's, that's my goal this year. That's what I'm working on. And I will say, you know, I have, I have a good, you know, eight or nine songs that I, I have written that are uh, getting into that place where I think they're ready to, get near the recording time. So it is something that is coming on the horizon. I'm hoping very soon, um, but I can't make any promises on the, on the release date yet. No need to. Well, all right, Neil, it's been an absolute pleasure to have you. And can you go ahead and shout out your social media platform so we can know where to find you? Yeah. So my Instagram is Neil underscore Cranston underscore music. And uh, my YouTube, you can find me just looking up Neil Cranston. And, uh, yeah, that's, that's about the only, uh, the only platforms that I'm really putting out a lot of music on right now. So nice. And Neil. once well, again on, on Apple music, Spotify, uh, Amazon music, you can find my single make it without you. Make it without you is the name of the single. Well, Neil, it's been an absolute pleasure. And I really appreciate you for offering your words and your wisdom and, and offering just your story. Yeah, Troy, I really appreciate you having me on the show, man. Thanks so much. All right. Thanks, Neil. All right, man. Well, we're, we're, we're good from here. And, uh, you know, we're, the, we're, we're, we're done recording, but it's been an absolute pleasure. Like I said before, it's been really awesome. It was cool to get to know you, Neil. And uh, let's get you on in the future if you want, man, if you, you had a good time. And look forward to getting your episode out there. But when you got some new music, let's get you back on. I'm sure people are going to love to see this and hear your story and just yeah. your, your whole process. And, you know, they're going to get into it. And then, you know, we can follow up. I think that'll be really cool. So let's yeah, see man, what we I do. really, I enjoyed the conversation and uh, it's, it's nice to get to talk to someone about this stuff because it gets my brain turning, you know, and it's, you know, these are the kind of conversations that, that I kind of have with myself, but you know, I don't, I don't talk to a lot of people about this. So it's, it's nice to have that. So I appreciate it, man. And I'll definitely uh, keep you in the loop and maybe we can talk uh, on a show in the future. Absolutely, Neil. Again, I mean, I really appreciate you. All right, Neil, it's been an absolute pleasure to have you on the show. And let's see if we can get you on again in the future. Let's see what we cook up. And when you got the new music out, let's definitely conduct something and get you back on. Absolutely, man. I will I will keep you in the loop. And uh, I'm hoping for new music soon. So, yeah, thanks for having me on. Thanks, Neil. Nice. All right, Neil. Well, All right, great. Uh, we got a couple of interviews we're sitting on, but let's see if yours comes out. You know, it's kind of by ransom right now, but uh, let's see when it comes out, man. We'll definitely send it to you. And if you have Apple podcasts or Google podcasts, you know, you can go ahead and listen to that. And if you if you like it, go ahead and leave a review because then it'll you know boost up your episode and we'll put it on YouTube and you can you can subscribe to us and we'll get you on there, too. We'll, we'll follow you back and stuff. Great. Yeah. Looking we'll turn, forward to it, man. We'll turn the wheel. All right, Neil. Really appreciate it. All right, Troy. Have a good one. Appreciate it. You you too, brother. Bye-bye.